I spent so long researching my family and trying to find a connection with um, my paternal granddad, Frederick William Lyons. And this whole time I've been looking at documents and censuses and and every time that I try and find tangible moments of their lives in in the life in the world that I live now, I guess, in modern day, it's really, really hard to ever get close to that. And um it always feels like I'm missing a little bit of them that I can't ever really get. And so when I was looking into Frederick's family, I, I went onto his mom's side and looked into the beards and the spags on that side. And they all lived they all lived really close to each other. They all lived in these villages just outside of Evesham or in Evesham themselves. It felt really um it felt really powerful to go to the communities like Flatbury and Charlton and Cropthorne and Hampton, all the places that we visited, because they are so similar to the way that they were in the 1800s. They still have thatched cottages and small little winding lanes and very little has changed. And I've never been able to find that with the more recent parts of my family tree when I'm looking for Fred. Um, the place that he lived has been demolished. The The church he, he went, he's married in was baptised in, has been demolished, like, everything is gone. And it was just so nice to go somewhere that things were the same, that the buildings that I touched, they had touched, that the roads they walked, I had walked. And it made me feel a sense of belonging when I went to these places because I didn't really... Before I had did this project, I didn't really realise I had English roots. In fact, I wouldn't have really ever connected with that before because I have such an Irish past, but it did give me a sense of place in the place that I live, do you know what I mean? Because Evesham's only down the road. And it just gave me such more of a sense of place and belonging in the places that I live now and the things that I do now. And it just really brought colour to the lives of the people that I've been staring at the screen for. On the trip, I brought my partner Nikki with me to help me with practical things like filming. But it also allowed me to put the project into more of a queer, uh, through a queer lens and look at the idea of chosen family and like blood related family and how those two things can interact within a space and that was really interesting when going to these very traditional um villages like Flabbury um because those ideas they were there just not really spoken about and it was really interesting to kind of be authentically myself in spaces where my ancestors may not have had the fortune to be able to do so. I took the train from Birmingham and I was really conscious to try and make sure I got a train that went uh, into Evesham station because I had family who worked on the railway lines and that was a massive, massively important part to this family, this side of the family tree for their journey that led them to Birmingham. And so we took the train down to from Birmingham to Evesham. The first stop of the day was very conveniently at Evesham station, which is where we got off from our journey from Birmingham. And right at the end of the station on platform two, there's a little hut at the end, which um, my which my three times great granddad, Charles Onesius Moore, uh, worked as a plate layer. As we saw in the 1891 census, he was a foreman plate layer on the railway, which means that he would have worked in that hut. Um, and basically he just had to inspect the track and make sure that uh, everything was running well and that the track was safe. And he did that job pretty much until he died. Uh, he died in 1922 and on the census 921, it also says that he was a retired plate layer. So he did this job for, for most of his life. So as we arrived in Flabbury, one of the first places we went to was the ferry house because we could kind of see it from our walk down. And I found a really interesting story about my four times great grand uncle, Samuel Beard, in the Worcestershire Chronicle on the 13th of May, 1868. Herbert Dingley and Matthew Corbett were basically charged by Samuel Beard, the ferryman of Flabbury, for willfully and maliciously damaging a rope at the Flabbury and Cropform ferry. The complainant stated that on the day the two defendants came to his ferry and got into his boat without leave. They proceeded to pull themselves over to the other side of the river and Samuel followed them in another boat and caught them on landing and made them pay the fare. He then returned with the ferry boat to the Flabbury side and a few minutes afterwards the policeman came and wanted to cross over to the Cropthorn side. Um, both of the defendants were on the other side of the river and seeing 
Samuel Beard with the policeman. I think they got a bit worried about it. So they legged it off into the fields. When the when Samuel Beard got to the other side, he saw that the, the ferry rope had been cut um, near the bank where the, the defendants were standing. Um, and it was also cut through in like several other places. So Samuel Beard wasn't very happy about that. And he took them to court, basically. And they got fined for 12 shillings each. Whilst we're in Flabbury, we decided to go to the Checkers Inn, um, not just for a pint, because my five times great granddad, Daniel Beard, uh, had an inquest there. And I'll read this extract from the Worcester, Worcestershire Journal, which will give us a little bit more context for why we actually went there. This was on the 16th of January, 1864. This was reported. So it says, Flabbury, sudden death. An inquest was held at the Checkers Inn, Flabbury, on Wednesday before C. Best Esquire, coroner, on the body of Daniel Beard. The deceased was 58 years of age, and on Monday last he was kidding wood on land belonging to H.R.H. Le Duc d'Amald. Uh, suddenly he fell down and asked his son Frederick Beard, a labourer, who had been assisting him to help him up. The son did, but he fell again. He was then conveyed home, and Mr. J. G. Rusher, surgeon, was sent for. Before the arrival of the gentleman, however, the deceased died. A post-mortem examination was made by Mr. Rusher, who found that the death had resulted from pulmonary apoplexy, caused by the enlargement of the heart. The jury returned the verdict to the effect that the deceased died by the visitation of God. One of the main reasons why I decided to do this trip was to go and visit the graveyards because it's really hard to see the graves online. It's just kind of impossible to see that. And it really kind of gives just extra information, usually on the gravestones. or sometimes have a little bit about like what was important to them or who they're related to or sometimes even like how they died. And it just felt like really important for me to kind of tie that loose end up at the end and just kind of go to the places that they lived and also the places that they died. I went to a few different graveyards. I went to um, the churches and graveyards of every village that we went into that day. Um, the churches were very important parts of uh, my ancestors' lives. They got married there, they were baptised there, they died there, they had funerals there, they did everything there. Um, and it felt like a really pivotal part of these communities and especially these communities in the 1800s, 1900s. Um, so a lot of the trip was centred around going through and basically trying to find them in those graveyards, especially um, for people that I knew were there that I couldn't, that I couldn't get the, the, the records for online. And I also wanted to be able to make sure that it was kept nice and kept looking good. I wanted to keep the graves looking presentable and nice because so often they kind of get left, left on their own and they get overgrown and people forget and, and move away and I think it's like a really important, it felt really important to me to kind of, even though I've got there hundreds of years late, that I, there is still care in the family for these people and they are still important even though they died so long ago and lived so long ago because they are very integral to who I am as a person and I would want the same care to be taken after my spaces if they were ever found, even if it was like hundreds of years later. So we got to the church at Flabbury and there was quite a few graves, but not loads. And there's a section in the middle that it was just all completely overgrown, all this bracken. And I was just like, he's going to be in here. <laughs> One of my family members will be in here. Um, and they were, <laughs> which is just like very my family. In this, in this bracken, we found the grave of Samuel and Mary Beard who it just felt like a really nice like closing up of the story because so much of my journey into uh, into Flabbury had been about this family. He was a market gardener after he was a after he was a ferry boat man. Um and that basically meant cultivating plants in in plants and shrubs and bushes in in his plot of land and um selling them on and he was one of the first people really in the community to do that. And you can kind of see on this grave, they have all these like flowers and things. And it's just, 
so it's really pretty so we cut it all away um and made sure that it was much more presentable than it was when we first got there and um Nikki went around and picked some flowers up and put them in the the little holder that was still there and I think one of the most beautiful things about this grave is that on the bottom of the inscription which we kind of only saw because we cut it all away um it says I have loved thee with an everlasting love Therefore, with loving kindness, have I drawn thee unto me. And it just really, I think, speaks a lot to the kind of people that they were. And it makes me very proud that they are the people that I come from because there's just like a, such a through line of just like love within that. And I find that really beautiful. It shows the importance of going to these places where my ancestors lived and did their lives because you find pieces of of themselves in in inscriptions like this you find out a little bit about them and I would never have found that if I didn't go down and didn't clean it up and and show them the love and respect that they had shown to their own community and that they had received from their community and it just felt like a really therapeutic 